So I grew up um, kind of in a in an art home. My dad was a farmer and a musician. Uh, my mother was a homemaker and a painter. So we had kind of a creative, uh, you know, upbringing. My sister sang with my dad, and, and my mom did a lot of cool landscape paintings and things like that. And where I found glass blowing was. Uh, where I was going to school, right across the street, there was a there was a glass shop in Temple, Texas, and uh, I started hanging out, uh, and enough to where the owner, you know, was like, "Hey, man, you're here, come in, try it out for you know a little bit, see if you like it," and uh, this is a perfect place to learn. So I ended up quitting my job, you know, as a draftsman, and uh, I started my life as a glass blower in 2001. About 2008, 2009, that's when the uh, the big bubble crashed. Uh, the economy went south. A lot of artists were going out of business. And um, unfortunately, Bob Shop, the one I was working at, uh, also you know, had to close down. So I found my, my way to another studio um, working on architectural glass that lasted about a year. And then there was a not-for-profit organization here in Salado that asked me to come and work for them. So that was kind of my entrance into Salado. Um, that tenure was about six months. And uh, I learned enough in my time being a, a glass artist that I could do it on my own. And so around uh, 2011, November 2011, Salado Glassworks was born. Um, we started in an old retired pottery studio. And uh, that's where we made the glass studio our home. Um, in 2014, we moved over to our, our larger facility, which used to be a cotton gin. And uh, this is where our, our bigger studio is. Uh, a lot more room, a lot more fun. You know, when we're blowing, uh, we have to have that starter bubble, and that initiates uh, really everything blown glass. Um, we'll, we'll gather some more glass on top, depending on how big we want to make, whatever it is that we're making. And then, you know, one person, the gaffer, he's the one working the piece. Um, <clears throat> and then you have assistants, and then there's always somebody on the back end blowing. And what they're doing is they're inputting that air into the piece, and that's, that's making it larger you know it's creating more volume on the inside of, uh, of the bowl or the mug or you know the chandelier piece or whatever it is that we're working on the beautiful thing about glass blowing is that you can't physically touch it it's 2040 degrees hot when it comes out of that furnace um, and you've got to make it do what you want it to do. Um, it's beautiful when it moves. It's unpredictable. You've got gravity involved and it wants to pull it down and you have to use your fingers and your hands and your eyes to, to make it, you know, get back on focus. Uh, we add color to it and there's a couple of different ways we add color. Different minerals go into making these colors. There's gold, there's silver, there's copper, there's a lot of different cool things. Um, and that's how we colorize our bowls. You know, we use uh, bar color, we use frit color, and both of those, you know, have different effects. So when I'm making the signature bowl, we use a lot of frit on the inside. Uh, we'll have six, seven, eight pieces of the rod uh, glass that gets applied on top. And so you've got this interior color that's completely different from what's on the exterior of the glass. You know, when, when people leave the gallery, they see what we make, they come out into the shop, you know, they, they smell the paper burning, they feel the heat off of, you know, the furnaces and the glory holes open, and then they have a, a better understanding uh, and a higher appreciation of what goes into what we make and what we do. And it's important for us to be able to, you know, expose what we do to a lot of people out in public. So for instance, you know, we have events and um, even on open studio days where people get to come in and watch. And it may be an opportunity for them to be exposed to something that they've never ever seen before. 
and you never know down the road, you know, uh, a young kid might see it, and uh, and when they get older, you know, that little spark is, man, you know, I saw that glass bar, I want to do that. Um, my five-year-old son's out here running around in the shop. And, uh, he helps me turn the pipe and you know, do all the cool, fun stuff. And, uh, so maybe one day he'll be the, the one to take over the, uh, the operation, the, uh, the rocket ship. I've got a team of people here that I wouldn't be able to do what I do if it wasn't for them. We've got you know, our marketing and gallery and photographer uh, genius. Um, I've got you know three or four people out here on the floor that help me. We all have um, a very good rhythm. And there's a lot of times where we're working, we don't talk because everybody knows the steps. You know, it's, it's called the dance. So uh, everybody knows the steps of the dance and, and the grand finale is making that piece uh, survive and end up in the oven. And da -da. Okay, well, first off, I apologize for the abrupt cutoff on this video. Uh, Gail actually had a, actually had a keg in his shop on tap. Um, so as the day got further along, the video kind of lost its way. But I hope you enjoyed it. We were able to show Gail's work, I think, able to show off Gail's skills. Glass blowing is pretty amazing uh, stuff. First time I've ever experienced it in person and um, I was impressed. Not, not just a little bit. I mean, I was super impressed. That looks very difficult. And I want to add, it is so freaking hot. Like those ovens heat the place up. I can't even imagine what it would be like in the middle of the summer in Texas. So uh, my hat's off to Gail, a super talented artist. There's going to be some info in the description if you want to learn more about him. And I appreciate you guys tuning in to Have It Made. Leave some comments, let me know what you think. we got more videos coming, and um, I'm excited about it. I think it's a cool series showcasing very talented craftspeople.